Okay, good morning class 5. Today our English lesson is going to begin at the right time, so we are not going to waste any more time as we did yesterday. Therefore, today we are going to check on different grammatical lessons that we are supposed to check. For example, in the first concept of uh, the grammar we are going to learn is preposition. Then we have set different questions so that you can provide or supply the right prepositions. The first one, I can never agree dash you. I can never agree dash you. Plus five, we have the verb agree. Agree takes the preposition with or to. But therefore, we can see there at the end we have the pronoun you. So you refers to a person. We say we can never agree with you. But we can never agree to something or to what you have said. So we say I can never agree with you. In the next sentence, we have afraid. Therefore, we say, are you afraid that's your father? Are you afraid that's your father? At the end, we are supposed to have a question mark because the sentence begins in question form by an auxiliary R. So we say, are you afraid that's your father? Afraid takes the preposition of. So we say, are you afraid of your father? Are you afraid of your father? That is what we have to take. The next one is, this book belongs dash me. This book belongs dash me. Belongs takes the preposition to. So we say, this book belongs to me. This book belongs to me, meaning I own this book. The book is mine. So we say, this book belongs to me. Belongs as a verb, take the preposition to. This plan differs dash that one. This plan differs dash that one. We say, this plan differs from that one. This plan differs from that one. Meaning, differs takes the preposition from. So we say, this plan differs from that one. Number five, we have, he is very fond dash T. He is very fond dash T. So, fond as a verb there takes the preposition of. So, we say, he is very fond of T. He is very fond of T. Down there, you can see the prepositions which we had been given to choose as our answers. I believe we have chosen all of them to fill the dashes which were left there. So, in our first, it was, I can never agree with you. Are you afraid of your father? This book belongs to me. This plan differs from that. He is very fond of tea. Complete the following proverbs. Complete the following proverbs. One, birds of the same feathers, birds of the same feathers, birds of the, of the same feathers flock together. Birds of the same feathers flock together. It means people of same characters or behaviors always form company. They walk together, they do things together, they play together commonly. But the worst of all is that when you are people of bad characters, you can sometimes form company with people of the same characters. So we can also say birds of the same feathers flock together. Look before as a proverb takes the meaning look before you leap look before you leap meaning you have to think carefully before you take any serious step step or you think 
carefully before you make or take any serious action. Commonly, if you don't look into your steps very well or your thoughts very well, you may hurry and end up causing a lot of problems. So you say, look before you leave, meaning you have to think carefully before you take any serious action. Too many cooks, too many cooks spoil the broth. Too many cooks spoil the broth. Meaning, whenever you are undertaking any action or any idea that you have in your mind, you want to put it into practice, you should not be looking for so many advisors. It is wrong because many people have different thoughts and many people when giving you advice, may advise you wrongly. So we say, too many cooks spoil the broth, which means too many advisors can ruin your ideas. A hungry man is dash. A hungry man is an angry man. A hungry man is an angry man. What does it mean? Commonly people quarrel, they fight, they engage themselves in unnecessary argument. When people always argue unnecessarily, there must be something which is making them to argue that much. So, class five, we say a hungry man is an angry man. Meaning, when you see somebody keeps picking up quarrels every now and again, that man must have some kind of hunger with him. It might be social problem, economical problem or any other psychological problem but it is now being put in form of anger so a hungry man is an angry man when the cat is away when the cat is away the mice will play when the cat is away the mice will play this one means always when somebody who is strict or following your activities closely is away from you, it is likely that you will engage in some kind of mischief, misbehaviors or unproperly thought uh, activities. For example, when your parents are not there, you may find yourself doing things which are not good. You are involving yourself in some kind of practices which are wrong. In that way, we can use, you are doing this because your father or your teacher is not there. So it is true that when the cat is away, the mice will play. A bad workman quarrels. A bad workman quarrels. This is another proverb plus five that when we use it, it means, uh, let us finish or complete it first. We say, a bad workman quarrels his tools. A bad workman quarrels his tools. Commonly, when somebody is not well prepared for a given task or chores, you realize that this person keeps talking about, oh, I didn't do it because I didn't have this. I didn't do it because such a such a thing happened. Oh, such a thing failed me, so I didn't do this. The reasons you are giving, giving are all false to cover up your mistakes all the time you have wasted. So, a bad workman quarrels his tools. A bad workman quarrels his tools or implements. Empty vessels make the most noise. Empty vessels make the most noise. That is in number seven. Empty vessels make the most noise. Commonly, people with little knowledge or people who have not have themselves engaged in any serious task commonly talk much. They have a lot of stories. They have all the topics that they can do. That's why such kind of people, we find them in class, they make a lot of noise. At home, they have a lot of stories to tell their friends and they keep walking here and there. Empty vessels make the most noise. People who are not knowledgeable or who are not serious in any given task will find themselves talking too much or giving false information which they do not even have idea about. So, class five, try not to be one of these empty vessels. Keep yourself engaged.
Look into this again. A good wine needs no bush. A good wine needs no bush. Whenever you are doing something good or whenever you are produced something which is good, you don't need to hide yourself. You be open. So good deeds or good things are always op done in the open, done in broad daylight. Somebody who is hiding always is doing something which is wrong. So a good wine needs no bush. Spare the rod to spoil the child. That is number nine. Spare the rod to spoil the child. A good spanking, correction, some punishment, a little here and there is necessary to a growing child. A growing child always have a fragile mind and he or she keeps thinking that whatever he or she is doing is right. So sometimes you may uh, wo give warning, give advice, but all fall into goods. Uh, it's like playing uh, the guitar to the goods. Now what are you supposed to do? Sometimes you can take a little uh, stick and give some lashes to the child to correct him or her. So it is not wrong to give punishment where it is due. So we say, you spare the rod, you spoil the child. You fail to correct the child in the right way, you prepare to meet a very ruined person in future. Still waters runs deep. People who are clever always keep silence because their knowledge is heavy. They always keep silent and they don't talk much because they are always busy. So class five, try as, as much as possible to be an example of still waters. You be an example of good people. A bird in hand, number 11, a bird in hand is worth the two in the bush. A bird in hand is in worth... The bush. We are now correcting the following sentences. Neither of the two girls were absent. We say, neither of the girls was absent. Neither of the girls was absent. Neither takes singular verb. So we cannot say were, but we say, neither of the girls was absent. Again, in that sentence, it is wrong for us to say, neither of the two, but we say, neither of, then the subject given to us, which is girls. Then you say, neither of the girls were uh, was absent that is the right sentence we are supposed to construct two the boy as well as the girl are at home the same as what we have done in number one class five we say the boy as well as the girl is absent no no the boy as well as the girl is at home don't say are at home, but we say is at home to respond to a singular phrase as well as. So as well as, together with, like, text, singular, verb. That is why we are using is. The boy as well as the girl is at home. Class 5, number 3. Between you and I, who is a fool? We say, between you and me, who is a fool? Between you and me, who is a fool? Not between you and I, but between you and me. Whenever we use between, we don't use I, but we use me, class 5. So we say, between you and me, who is a fool? Either I or he are going. We say, it is wrong for us to say, either I or he are. But we say, either I or he is going. Somebody may say, either me. But do we say, me is going? Do we say, him is going? But we say, I am going, he is going. So we say, Either I or he is going. But at, as well we can say either he or I are going. Number five. Plus five. To, to who did you give the prize? A very wrong sentence. To as number. Who did you give? Did and gave. Two subjects in simple past do not agree. So we must make them agree by saying 
the preposition instead of number two, but we use the preposition to. Then we say to whom? To whom did you give? To whom did you give the prize? At the end of that statement, we have a question mark. To whom did you give? To whom did you give the prize? To whom did you give the prize? So, class five, it is wrong for us to write or construct a sentence in our communication like to who did you give the prize but you say to whom did you give the prize number six the house belongs to them it is theirs Ref, no 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 Pos uh, possessive pronoun possessive pronoun showing ownership the house belongs to them it is theirs not it is them's but it is theirs the ball belongs to us it is is ours class five complete the following sounds the dash of a gun sound produced by different objects we have the booming of a gun the booming of a gun class five the booming of a gun then we have the jingling of coins I had the coins jingling in his pocket. I had the coins jingling in his pocket. So we have jingling of coins. I had the dash tinkling as I stood from the table. I had the bell tinkling. So we say tinkling of a bell. Tinkling of a bell. I had the tinkling of a bell as I stood from the table. A small bell tinkles. Then a very big bell, like those ones which we can find on top of some churches, is charming. Chime. So I had the bell charming, chiming from the church hall. Number five, class five. When I heard the dash of the ambulance siren, I peeped to see what it was. When I heard the dash of the ambulance siren, I peeped to see what it was. An ambulance siren, class 5, wails. So when I heard the wailing, when I heard the wailing of the ambulance siren, I peeped to see what it was. So an ambulance siren wails. The bell, a small bell, tinkle, while a, la, a big bell chimes. Coins, like 10 shilling coin, 1 shilling coin, 5 shilling coin, jingles. A gun booms. Number 6, class 5. He was given two dash of the whip for abusing his mother. He was given two dash of the whip for abusing his mother. A whip lashes. So he was given two lashes. Lashes of the whip for abusing his mother. He was given two lashes of the whip for abusing his mother. Class whip. 5 until you are given lashes of the whip so that you learn something. Final part. She speaks dash English than her brother. Comparative. We say she speaks better English than her brother. Number two. Kanono is dash girl in our class. We say Kanono is the fattest girl in our class. Kanono is the fattest girl in our class. A class has many people so we use the superlative E-S-T plus the Kanono is the fattest girl in our class. Please give me dash milk. Please give me dash milk. We say, class five, please give me more milk because we have much. Much changes to much, more, most. So since you had been given some, now you have more, you need more. We say, please give me more milk. Give me more 
milk. Which is the harsh way to kill a rat? Class 5, a rat is very difficult to kill. Now we look for ways. So we say, which is the easiest way to kill a rat? Which is the easiest way to kill a rat? The easiest way. We had the adjective easy. Superlative, which is the easiest way to kill a rat? What is dash news? What is dash news? Class 5, we receive news on different categories on a daily basis. So we say, what is the latest news? What is the latest news? What is the latest news? Mulki is dash girl in our class. Class has many people. For example, in your class, you are over 30. More than two people. So we say, Mulki is the cleverest girl in our class. Mulki is the cleverest girl in our class. Class 5, remember that uh, in the pre our previous lesson, we talked about proverbs. And even at the beginning of this lesson, we also handled some proverbs. Now, right now, you know what proverbs are. And we can simply give the meaning as you, I can read what you had given before. Somebody answered, as you make your bed, what is the answer? You gave me the answer as, as you make your bed, so you must prepare to lie in it. As you make your bed, so you must prepare to lie in it. Number two, better late than dash. Abdi gave me the answer as, better late than never. Correct. Aisha, you are also correct to tell me that as you make your bed, so you must prepare to lie in it. Correct. No smoke dash. Mohammed told me in his writings here that no smoke without fire. No smoke without fire. Uh, Fatun, your answer was correct in number four. Rome was not built dash. You told me that the answer is Rome was not built in a day. Rome was not built in a day. Class 5, thank you for having given me such a nice answer to the questions I gave before this particular lesson. And now we have come to the end of our lesson. Thank you very much. Have a good day. I appreciate your attention. You have been very kind. You have not made any noise. You have written everything and our lesson has come to an end successfully. Thank you very much, class.